Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Rhode Island State House and Go Local Live. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. I'd like to welcome my next guest on, Rachel Flum with the Economic Progress Institute. Thanks Thank for joining me you. today. I know it's a busy week for you, and you're usually up at the State House lobbying to begin with, but you've got a big budget and policy conference taking place next week. Your 10th big national speaker. Talk with folks about what this event means to the organization. Yes, absolutely. So thanks for having me today. It is nice to have a little lull here at the State House and get ready for our conference. Um, we have done um, a conference every year that looks at a big issue that's happening right now. Um, and we try to bring community leaders and legislators um, and other organizations and just the general public to highlight an issue that we think is important and have a conversation about how to move those policies forward. Um, and so this year, we focused on a report that we released in December um, that looked at workers, the current workforce, and what their skills and workforce needs were. Mm. Um, and so the 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 event is modeled right out of the report. So you're going to be focusing on this report, the skills of the workforce. And again, we talk about you being up here and, and lobbying. Let's let's parlay that a little bit onto the policy side of things. What are some important items on your 2018 agenda up here that fit into that, that subject matter? Sure, absolutely. So this is really focused on ensuring that the current workforce has the skills and the education um, opportunities that they need. Um, it turns out that there's 75,000 Rhode Islanders who don't have a high school diploma and another uh, 30,000 um, who don't have the English language skills that they need for the jobs of the future. And so we really are focused on this year um, ensuring that the budget um, continues to maintain access to adult education services um, and that you know we've seen the investment in those go down over time, but mm -hmm. we're seeing the needs increase. Um, and we know that even though the jobs of the future, many of them will be high tech, they'll still be um, lower wage, um, lower skilled jobs, and so we need to be sure that all workers have what they need. So we're really focused on both the, the budgetary uh, items and making sure that there's enough um, support in the budget for those important programs. And then there are also, you know, we also know that there are programs that will continue to, um, I mean, there are jobs that will continue to not uh, have family sustaining wages. So having work support programs that wrap around those like the child care program um, and the earned income tax credit and some other work supports like that. And do you expect a number of legislators to be at this uh, event? <laughs> we do. Um, the the governor's bringing welcoming remarks. Um, the governor's staff is bringing welcoming remarks. And Senator Conley will also bring welcoming remarks from the Senate. And then we expect to have about 10 or so legislators in the room. And so you talk about that investment, as you said, is needed, again, for those folks not with a diploma, not with the English language skills. And you said you've seen that fall off. Is there potential to maintain levels this year increase, or is it just the constant fight to stave off cuts? So um, we do think that they will be maintained this year, at least in the governor's proposed budget, which is good news. Um, you know, we really do think as we continue to look at the projections for the jobs of the future, we will need a greater investment than what we have now. Um, and, you know, while we've seen good news this week around the college promise, which is great, um, we also know that we'll have to do more than just graduate kids from college to get to the jobs of the future, that mm -hmm. we really need to be sure um, that our current workforce has what they need to move up the ladder. And so you talk about the current workforce. I mean, we do know about the College Pro Promise Program. But again, those folks without a diploma, the English language skills, is the goal to give them skills? Is, is it to get them to college or is it to get them that sort of stop gap to be able to get the employment? And there, you know, are there varying levels? Right. So there absolutely are varying levels. Um, what the studies show is that we need to have about 70% of the workforce with two years post-secondary education. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean a BA, right? It can mm. mean graduating from CCRI. It can mean um, engaging in an apprenticeship program or a certificate program. Um, because we do know that a good portion of lower skill jobs are good paying jobs. Mm. Um, and so people have all different interests and, and um, levels of ability. And so we want to be sure that those opportunities exist across the board. And so, I mean, how do you think the state is doing right now? Uh, I mean, I want to give you a letter grade, if you will, but obviously the potential is always there to do better. But how is the state doing right now? Right. Well, we do know that we have a wait list every year for the adult basic education services, largely the ELL classes, so okay. the English language classes. Um, so, you know, we have about 1,300 people on a wait list for that. Wow. And the, the current um, uh, pool of people who are being served is about 6,000. So about a third of people are on a wait list, right? <laughs> Um, and so we know that that needs to be addressed, and we know that the state has not been investing fully in ELL classes at the elementary school mm -hmm. and high school level, um, so we need to be sure to invest there so that we then aren't uh, graduating adults who still need those 
the skills as well. Um, and then certainly we know that there is a ways to go to get people to that two-year post-secondary mm. where the state needs to be. Um, I think the study that Georgetown did recently showed that we were last in the country um, in terms of having uh, having the largest gap to get to where we need to be. So there, there, there's room for improvement. So there's going to be plenty of stakeholders there next week at the conference as well. But talk with us while we have you here at the State House. In addition to these measures that we talked about, what else is on the Economic Progress Institute's agenda for 2018? Sure, absolutely. So um, we were pleased to hear Kevin talk right before me about the early learning. Um, we very much believe strongly in improving access to early learning programs, um, and not just at four-year-old levels, but all the way down to birth. Um, so we're pushing hard to increase um, reimbursement rates for providers who provide um, quality child care um, for our lowest income kids. Okay. Um, so that's called the tiered reimbursement rate bill. Um, there is a portion of that in the budget. And then there's some um, larger uh, bills out there from MPA and Crowley. So that's high on our agenda. Um, increasing the earned income tax credit is again on our agenda. Looking at um, ensuring that the um, the Medicaid program is sure, sure enough, especially as we face uh, federal threats. Mm. Um, we have concerns about the co-payments that are included in the governor's budget and what that would mean for low-income folks. Um, and then we're working on expanding um, access to paid family leave um, and ensuring that people are able to take um, time off to care for their loved ones when they need to. Okay, I appreciate your taking the time to give us a little overview again of the conference next week. We'll provide links to both the Institute and the conference as well. But Rachel Flum, I appreciate your taking the time Great. to come on today. Thank you very much. Up and at the State House. People will join us next week. Yes, and we hope to talk with you soon. So we'll let you go around the corner here. Okay. I'll be right back here at the State House. Great, thanks. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Rhode Island State House. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. Thanks for joining us today during recess week, but still plenty going on here at the state capitol. Kicked off with Secretary of State Nellie Gorbea giving us an update both on election security, where things stand following last year's report release of 17 elections recommendations. We're going to have links for that as well. And what the office is going to put forth regarding an election-based website that is going to enable folks to be able to get a lot of information at their fingertips, new and improved. We'll be able to bring that to you when that is live, but she talked a little to that as well. Kevin Gallagher, Deputy Chief of Staff in the Office of Gina Raimondo, gave us an overview of the governor's priority for school construction and, again, the $250 million school construction bond, looking to get approval from the Assembly to put on the ballot for November, and the pre-K recognition that the state received this week for being one of three states to receive the top-level recognition for the pre-K programs. And then Rachel Flum with the Economic Progress Institute telling us about the conference taking place next week. We appreciate your taking the time to tune in. We appreciate your feedback. We look forward to seeing you next on Live. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel.